Right, we're back for the final of the three uh, tank troop boxes. This time it's the British. This has been a real journey for me. Yeah, you seem to have really enjoyed it. I have it. been indulging myself. To we are now two months into this excursion into the world of tanks with John. He hasn't eaten yet. No, I haven't. I'm wasting I away. have. I've been eating the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway, let's have a look at these Cromwells, because right. I've been looking forward to seeing look these. At the Cromwells, are I these believe... plastic as well? Yes, these are plastic. Uh, they moved from the resin kit to the plastic kit. Okay. Um, again, thanks to Italery, which have been doing a real bang-up job of these plastic kits. A lot of people have slated Italery in the past for its quality of models, but Yeah, but I don't this care. is now wargaming miniatures. This is now it's, wargaming it's not models, miniatures. it's wargaming miniatures. This isn't military miniatures anymore, this is gaming. So. Yeah. So, I will take one as well. You will take one as well, two. and you'll have a go at the same time while I open up the other one, and we yeah. can start showing stuff under the... The close camera thingy. The close camera. Now, Cromwell is an interesting one right? as a, a tank historian uh, perspective because Cromwell was built in 1943. Right. Uh, it was developed in 1942 to 43. Yep. It was meant to be the British answer to the Sherman. Right. It was meant to be their version of the Sherman. It was meant to yeah, be this, their... Yeah, this was meant to be our medium main battle tank. Yeah, their main battle tank at the time. Right. However... And something that really peeved a lot of tank crews at the time, we had already faced Panthers. We had mm. already faced Tigers. When they make this. And we made this. Right. Now, I, I, I can see why they would get annoyed. This. Because you know, your, your common soldier is going to look at it and go, but they, they've got the big shiny toys. What's this? This tank personifies the British Ministry of Defence's lack of intelligence when it comes to designing weapons. Okay. Everything about this tank is rubbish. Is it mediocre? Except for one thing. I'll, I'll assume everything works, but it's mediocre. Well, we'll get to it. Okay, we'll to okay. It. We'll, let, let's get stuck in, shall we? We'll get stuck in. So, we have the lower hull. the hull. Yep. Now, this tank used Christie's suspension. Oh, big surprise. This was part of the British mindset of the time that we wanted fast tanks. And that mentality never really left us from the 1930s when mm -hmm. we had what was called the Experimental Armour Brigade. Okay. Which was, during the time, was the most advanced tank unit in the world. Mm -hmm. And everybody came to look at it. Germany walked away with the idea for Blitzkrieg. Really? Russia walked away with it for what they called Deep Battle, which okay. is essentially their version of Blitzkrieg. Mm -hmm. America walked away from it and went, Nah, we're Americans, we don't need that. <laughs> um, and suddenly the internet went on fire again. <laughs> J. Walter Christie again came in and mm. said, I have this brilliant design for you. Yes. So Britain made an entire series of tanks on the Christie suspension. Okay. Called the Cruisers. Okay. So you had the Cruiser Mark 1, 2, 3, and they were called likes of Crusader, Covenanter, you'll know some of these names. From yeah, from World of Tanks. Cromwell was the latest one. Mm. And was being prepped for the use uh, uh, during Operation Overlord for D-Day. Okay. Uh, this was the tank that a lot of the British forces were going to go into combat with. Okay. Um, it stuck to the cruiser idea of having Christie, Christie suspension on a powerful tank. So mm. it could go fast and it was manoeuvrable. Mm. Its problems were pretty much everything else. Right, armour. Armour was ridiculously bad. Um, okay. Done was ridiculously bad. It was already outdated. Really? Yeah. It was a six-pounder gun, which is basically the British version of the American 75mm gun on the Sherman. Okay. So it was firing roughly the same velocity, the same type of shell, same okay. type of propellant, and was doing then exactly... Then why make this at all if you have an American equivalent that you can get given to you? I think it was probably... Is it just pride? It was probably a national pride thing because okay. we had been taking Shermans off America under Lend-Lease. Aye. And everybody was seeing us using Shermans. Everyone was seeing us using other people's equipment. Right. And we didn't really have that so many So we, we didn't want to look like Oliver Twist going, please, sir, may I have some more? Exactly. So they came up with Cromwell. Okay. And even after all the lessons learned in the desert fighting and, you know, all these tank crews coming back and saying, our cruisers are rubbish. Stop giving us this stuff. The hatches are too small. We can't get out of it in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Um, the guns are useless. Aye. We haven't got decent sights. We haven't got decent armor. We haven't got a decent engine. Okay. So <laughs> when it came to Cromwell, they went, right, we're going to make another cruiser tank, but we're going to put a V12 petrol engine in it. Where are we going to get this petrol engine? We're going to take it out of a Spitfire. 
They put a Spitfire engine in that. There is a version of the Rolls Royce Merlin engine, which is a, a, an uprated version which runs on carburetors instead of in fuel injection in the back of the Cromwell, which is the Griffin engine, the Rolls Royce Griffin, which is a V12 petrol. Okay. Huge amount of horsepower. I'll assume a fair bit of grunt. A fair bit of grunt, yeah. Right. Huge amount of horsepower. This thing could travel at 45 to 50 miles an hour, no problem on flat ground. What weight was it? They were about 27, 26, 27 tons. Okay, the brakes were a suggestion at that point. Pretty much. At that speed, you may as well not bother braking, because if you're going to hit it, you're going to go through it mm. <laughs> at that speed. So right. we'll, we'll show the examples here. So we have the top of the hull. Mm -hmm. This piece out of the corner here mm -hmm. is the driver's hatch. What? The driver's hatch slides out sideways from the vehicle. That sounds ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Please, I, I assume this was... We can't get out the hatches, it's crap. All right, we'll try that. The reason they did that was because when the turret is rotated round, the mm. turret will cover a hatch opening up the ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, you see what I yeah. mean? Yeah, because the actual <laughs> uh, the co-driver's side... You have to rotate the turret round to get the co-driver out. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it seems a bit silly. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a nice looking tank. Nice looking, but that's a glaring design flaw from the get-go. Yep. You'll see now there'll be a theme starting to, to hop in here with Cromwell. This front plate of armour is amazingly flat. I mean, we've just looked at T-34 and you've oh, yeah. seen how... Nice sloped how armor, sloped beautiful yep. look. Yeah. This is all flat to the enemy. Mm -hmm. Everything is flat armour on this thing. Yeah, so when it strikes, it stays. Yep. So moving further back on the, the top of the hull, mm -hmm. we have our stowage bins, which will be where you'll put your... Uh, your general kit, your mess kit, um, I bet a gear, gun cleaning kit, and all that sort yeah. of stuff in there. Um, further back is basically beyond the crew compartment, which will end here. Mm -hmm. The rest of this is engine, so you nearly have half of the entire hull devoted to engine. Mm. Um, this was also a rear wheel drive tank, so you had, like in T thirty four, you had the engine and the transmission in one ah. big lump. Yeah, basically. You weren't having to over engineer it to actually get it to the front. Yeah, the only problem was that you had to over engineer it to make it work. Oh. Uh, okay. Whereas T-34 was everything nice and simple, the British decided to over-engineer absolutely everything they touched and made the transmission to where if you took a corner too fast, you'd probably break something. So like, you put a squatty in this, he's going to break it? Probably. Um, I'm probably dissing it a bit too much. By, by the late war, we were getting pretty good with the engineering. Okay. You know, but early versions of cruiser tanks were complete rubbish. Okay. So moving across the spree, we have our tracks. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing you'll notice after having looked at very T-34, narrow. Very, very narrow. narrow, very narrow and very brittle, mm. um, which is another thing that all the cruiser tanks really suffered from. Mm -hmm. They never really changed the track width for whatever reason. Um, up here, we have the driver's hatch, which you'll see on the top of it. Yep. That's at it. the end of the... And you see the shape of it where it has to open out sideways. Yeah, it has to slot in and pivot. It's an incredibly small space to try and get out of in a hurry. Yeah. Uh, moving across, we have, oh, I wonder what piece that is. You have a couple of plates. I think one of those is maybe your co-driver hatch. Those are both the co-driver hatches, those two little pieces. All right, so they go together to make the one hatch? Yep, they okay. make the one hatch. And across, we have the lower hull, which shows off the Christie suspension. We have the... Uh, we have lots of little return rollers, are those? Uh, no, those aren't return rollers. I believe those are periscopes. Those are actually the, the covered periscopes. All right, so what, they just dot by all over the place? Yep, they'll be on the, the front of the hull and they'll be on the top of the turret yeah. as well. We then have lots of towing eyes. Yep, so we have towing eyes and lifting A couple eyes. of antennas. A couple of antennas. Uh, the British tanks had two antennas because we had we like to run two radio sets in our tanks. Why? Uh, we had an A set and a B set. Uh, one breaks, the other's good? No. What? A set was for talking to company command, talking to other units. Right. Uh, B set, which is the shorter, which would be the shorter aerial in this case, but it was apparently the longer one, uh, would be for inter vehicle communications. So, vehicles within your squadron, mm -hmm. you will be able to talk to them on your B set, while your A set will talk to company command. Why? It made it simpler because all you had to do in your radio set was go A set to B set. Okay. And now you're talking to your tanks. If you okay. flick back to A set, you're talking to your commander. Okay. As Fair in enough. your commander way back there yeah, somewhere. Yeah. About the, 35 miles behind. Yeah, the guy at Divisional Headquarters. Yeah. Okay. And the final piece on this sprue is part of the back armour right. as well. So, as much as I slate Cromwell, I do like the look of it. Mm. Um, but, I mean, that's pretty much where my love of it ends. Okay. Because as a combat vehicle, it just 
didn't stand up to what was its equivalent at the yeah. time. Okay, let's move to the business end. Let's move to our business end. So we have the sides of the lower hull, mm -hmm. uh, which is your Christie suspension. So you have all your road wheels, which uh, a trait with Christie suspension is big road wheels. Mm -hmm. Always big road wheels because it allows them to travel further. Aye. And they have Aye. better suspension on them. You have your front idler wheels. Yeah. And this will be where your drive sprockets will be, which are over here. Yeah. I gotta keep things in focus. <laughs> <laughs> in shot, yes. I think you mean. In, in shot and focus, because look, I don't know. So here we have the armor plates for the turret. Yep. Um, now, this I think is very interesting for this particular model kit. Because mm -hmm. they've done the turret. They've done the turret, yeah. And then they have these extra pieces that go on around the outside to give you all the detail. Yep. Which I think makes for a far, far cleaner. Molding process. It's a, it's a cleaner kit because the likes of the other plastic kits that they have don't have that sort of detail on the sides of the turret. Mm -hmm. I, it was imagine, such a, a flat turn. Could you imagine sitting for an hour trying to glue these things on in the right place? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be bothered with that. Yeah, um, instead it's just a nice big chunky plate that you just go, boop, there it is. Yep. So it's pretty self explanatory what we've got here. You've got the front plate for the turret where the gun is, mm -hmm. you have the back plate of the turret, and you have the two sides. Yeah, it's just me or is that two little shell ejection ports? Uh, those are probably pistol ports. Okay. Uh, they'll open up and you can fire a small arm out of them or something okay. like that. Okay. Um, sliding further up, we have something that's quite unique to Allied tanks, and I'm surprised it's not on the Sherman kit, but you have a Cullen's hedgerow cutter. Yeah. I assume this just let you run through a hedge and just knock it, up, knock it away from yourself? Yeah. They, those were made out of beach obstacles they grabbed off the, the landing beach. Oh, so the big uh, cross iron pieces, they yeah, just they, they cut, cut those down? Those, they cut those down and cut them into shape and then welded them onto the front of the tank. Thanks, Germany. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so we have, also here we have these four pieces which are for the guards for the lights on the front of the hull. Mm -hmm. um, which is quite an intricate piece actually, when, when you consider when we've looked through the Sherman and the T-34 models and they're all quite Aye. blocky and simple. Aye. And this is actually quite a delicate kit in some, some mm. regards. Um, yeah, but you do have to remember that Atalari do miniatures historical kits, so if you see the odd little flourish from it in these kits, I wouldn't be surprised they're to see it. They're just showing off. That's really what they're doing. Hey, there's nothing wrong with showing off whenever you're able to. And <laughs> it, it is a nice little extra detail that will light up your tank on the battlefield. True. Not to mention the fact that you can damage the hell out of those and yes. make your tank even more individual. Yes. Moving across, we have parts for the engine deck. So uh -huh. the bottom plate here, which has a small hatch on it, would be one of the, uh, would be the radiator cover. Okay. The top of the radiator cover, you can open that and pour water into your radiator. Mm -hmm. uh, the back, you have part of the exhaust system, this will be the grill, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason on some British tanks there's no exhaust as such that comes out, it's, you know like on T-34 there's the two little pipes, oh, yeah, yeah. this just vents into a grill, right, and it just vents it out the back right. of the vehicle, yeah. and this bit here is the, the uh, deflection plate which will sit over the grill. Mm -hmm. I assume it's just to, to keep dirt and shrapnel out? It's, it's to do that as well as to force the smoke of your own engine away from you, rather than uh, up and over you again, you know. Okay. So, um, so at the top of the sprue, we have part of, the, uh, I think that's the rear hull. Okay. Part of the hull rear anyway, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we have the gun mount. Now this is different to the Sherman again, because now we have the gun barrel separate. Yeah. As you notice. We also have the coaxial Biza machine gun, the 7.62 or 7.92. Yeah, but I'm, I'm looking at this and it looks as if you have a, a point on there for your gun to actually just clip in yeah. and do the same again. Yeah, so pretty it's, much. it's maybe just there was a wee bit more detail or just the way they wanted to put it on the sprue. Yeah, it's probably whatever way they needed to fit it on the sprue. Mm -hmm. We then have the turret itself. Yep. And like I said, it's smaller than it actually is because you have those four extra pieces to go around it. Yeah, exactly. You, again, you can tell how small these crew hatches are. I mean, they're ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, I, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sliding yeah. across, we have the bottom of the turret as well. Mm -hmm. And I believe those are probably, yeah, those are commander's hatch pieces. Okay. They're so small, I couldn't even tell. <laughs> All right. All right, you then have the gun. And then have the gun barrel, which was the six-pounder mm -hmm. uh, or 75 millimeter. Yeah. Um, I better slide that across a bit more. We have the, the front of the hull, yep. uh, which is the bow machine gun. And the driver's direct vision slot. Yep. And then we have... I think the last two little armour plates to go on somewhere along I the back, maybe for storage. Those are probably running along the sides or the back of it. Yeah. I, at, at this point, I despise Cromwell so much. <laughs> <laughs> and yet and be all, it's still quite the pretty tank. It is a very nice kit. It is a gorgeous it's a looking kit. It's a good kit. When yep. you paint them up and they look, they look really good. Again, we have a transfer sheet. Yep, I'll move these out the way. Uh, so for various different armoured regiments and divisional markings. Why is there an there. American star on there? 
Yeah, it's not an American star. Okay. It is an allied air recognition symbol. Fair enough. Don't know why they went with the star, and why they didn't just go with a massive middle finger, which would have been hilarious to any German plane flying over. <laughs> clearly, uh, you, some you, of the, you do see some of the messages they write on bombs. Clear, clearly, some of the Allied commanders didn't really have a sense of humor. Mm. Well, Eisenhower probably didn't have a sense of humor. Mm. <laughs> but no, that has been a, a great look. I assume there's one more of these we're probably going to be waiting on, which is obviously the German box. Yes, we we do require a German box now. I'm not too sure when it's coming, mm. but it will be. Uh, there, eventually. there has to be a fourth box. Yes. Really, there has to yes. be a fourth box. But no, I've really enjoyed that look at those three boxes of tanks. Really? You, know. you sound like you're half asleep. No, 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 I'm, I'm recovering. I was he's out recovering. at a stag at the weekend, which was quite fun. Drinking he's with the old guard, they died. He's still hung. He's still hung. I'm not hung over. I have a sore throat, that's all. We're quite hung over. Uh, <laughs> right, anyway, guys, we're going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed the look at the three tank troop boxes from Warlord Games. We will be bringing you a look at the, the next one that comes out as soon as we get it in our hands. You'll have a video for it. Uh, feel free to drop a comment below if John and me have got anything wrong, or if you just want to say, you know what, I enjoyed that, drop us a comment below, give us a like on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and we'll see you again in the next video.